There was a tape called James Charles Jr. Good afternoon, Mr. Shaw. Would you please state your name and spell it for the record? Uh, my name is James Shaw Jr. Uh, J A M E S S H A W J R. All right, Mr. Shaw, um, were you present at a Waffle House on April twenty second, two thousand eighteen? Yes, sir. Where were you coming from? Um, it had kind of been a long night. I got started downtown at uh, Jonathan's Grill down here. I was invited by a friend named Key. Um, was real apprehensive of going. Um, the whole night was kind of a cluster of different emotions that I didn't want to do or do. Um, Brendan had invited me to one of his fraternity's parties. Um, so we went to the party off of uh, Bell Road and Nine Bar. Um, and that's where we were before the Waffle House. Did y'all arrive together? Uh, we rode in different vehicles. He has a white Jeep, and I have a red uh, four-door F-150 at the time. Okay. And what was your relationship with, with Brennan? Is he your friend, or is he your frat brother, or what? Um, he's definitely not my frat brother, but he's my, <laughs> he's my good friend. Uh, we've known each other for quite a while um, through different organizations. Okay. Um, and so while you were at this party, um, did you have anything to drink? No. Okay. Sober. You were completely sober. Please. Yes, sir. And so when you drive to the to the waffle, when you leave the party, where did you go? Um so when we leave the party of Nine Bar on Bell Road, um there's a Taco Bell that's pretty close to down the street. Um we pull in the Taco Bell parking lot. Taco Bell is closed. Um I think McDonald's was closed also. So we drive up the street up Bell Road and we go to um, the Waffle House that's off the Bell Road beside Thornton's gas station. Uh, the gas, uh, that Waffle House parking lot is completely packed and me and BJ, because we have bigger vehicles, we just park on the curb um, and we walk down. It's a lady that has a black central, knew it still has drive out tags and somebody had just hit it at the time. Um, and so she was going through you know, what if you have to go through for um, to file a claim? Um, so we walk inside um, the Waffle House. We kind of actually walk all the way around the Waffle House. Uh, we get a seat, um, and we're like, it's a little ratchet in here. So we determine not to sit down at that particular Waffle House. <laughs> um, so we get up, and I had been to that Waffle House, the new Waffle House that we were going to go to off of Murfreesboro Pike the weekend or two weekends before. Um, and I knew it was pretty new and I knew nobody had been there. So uh, we stopped at the Thornton's and we made our way to the Waffle House off of Market Girl Pike. And Mr. Shaw, about what time are you leaving Thornton's to go to the to the new Waffle House on Murphy's Real Pike? I say we would leave about 3.15, 3.12. I think we made it to the other Waffle House about 3.18. Okay. Um, and when you got to the to the new Waffle House, what uh, what did you do when you got there? Um, immediately, what we did was uh, we pulled in in the far north entrance of the Waffle House. Um, then we made our way to the south end of the Waffle House. Uh, BJ pulled in. We left a space in between us, and I backed in. Okay. And did you get out of the car? Out of your truck, rather? Yes. BJ got out of his car. When I got out of my truck. Um, and we made kind of a diagonal walk towards the Waffle House. What was y'all's kind of mood or vibe at the time? 
Um, I was honestly kind of annoyed because of what was going on with the party, and I actually didn't want to really be out. I actually just wanted to stay in the house, but um, it was him and his fraternity, so I thought I should just go support, um, be a good friend, and I just thought I'd you know, just go out. Um, but nonetheless, when we got at the Waffle House, we were, um, we were fine. We had fun. We were laughing. Um, and then we proceeded to walk in. Did you see a, a, a goldish, tannish pickup truck sitting near the, close by the entrance of the Waffle House? Yes, it was a Shelly Silverado extended cab. And um, did you see anyone inside of that truck? Yes, I did. You're kind of looking over to your left. Um, are you seeing the person that you saw inside the truck in this courtroom? He's giving me the same look he did that night. And what was that look? Looked like he didn't care. Did uh, either of you say anything, mention that look, the way that he was looking? You, so, you are Mr. McMurray. So Brennan gave you the PG-13 version. Brennan said to me, Look at this crazy motherfucker. Gonna shoot up the place. When we walked in. And if you look at the video, I turn around. And I look back at him. And he's still staring at us. Um, when we walking in. Because he was sizing us up. What did you do as you got inside? Uh, as we got inside, BJ sat in the third seat at the bar. Um, at the countertop. And I sat in the first seat. when we had a seat in between us. Why'd you feel like that? Uh, BJ's 5'10", 260. I'm 6'2", 214. We just wanted some space in between us. Just man code? Absolutely. Gotcha. Um, and was there anything about sitting with your back to the windows that gave you any concern? Well, usually um, I don't ever sit with my back to the window. Um, BJ sat down first, and then I had the first seat. Um, there was two ladies beside us in a booth, and then it was a skip booth, then it was Trey and Mike Garth. Um, I could see D'Ebony's face, and then I could see Sharita's back of her head. Um, as I glanced and looked around the whole place, uh, I could see D'Ebony, and like I said, I could see Mike Garth and everybody else, but um, I was thinking that was gonna happen. Okay, so you're saying that to your right, there were individuals sitting in, the, in those booths to the right of you? Yes, sir. Did you know them before April 22nd, 2018? No, sir. Okay. Where were Mike Garf, who you've described, and Trey seated? Um, they were seated across from each other in the booth, in the very back booth beside the bathroom entry door. Okay. Um, and then Sharita and D'Ebony? Um, they were pretty much right beside us at the booth, right beside us. And I think it was a young lady, not, now who I know is Kayla Shaw, uh, was sitting kind of close to BJ. Okay, and so because you you say you didn't know her at the time, is she related to you? Not at all. Okay, um, and did you see any other individuals inside of the Waffle House? Um, we, we heard Torin um, Sanderlin. Um, he said he was gonna go on his 15 minute smoke break. He'd be right back. Um, and we saw, I mean, you see the shapes and sides of people's, but um, at the time, I didn't really know them, um, but I, you know, like I said, looked around and checked my surroundings. Understood. Um, as you were seated at the bar area waiting, I guess, either to order or to eat, what, what is, uh, are you guys having any conversation? Are you? Um... Um, so we're talking about the cook, um, and the cook is the other cook um, after Torrance stepped out. Um, the other cook is washing dishes, and as he's washing these dishes, we're just looking at him because he's stacking them up on the shelf, and he keeps stacking them and stacking them. Um, and I guess they had to be at least 12 or 15 plates high, and we're like, those plates are going to come down. They're going to crash to the ground. So we have a small little joke about that. Mind you, my phone is on the countertop of the, um, of the bar. Um, no sooner do we start joking and laughing about that, you know, you kind of hear a noise. I didn't really pay attention, and I kind of turn over my left hand shoulder, and you can see this figure kind of falling. Um, now that I know that's Joe Perez, and then the windows are shot out, and it looks like 
uh, a silver glitter that's going through the air. Um, all in one turn, I made a step to my right towards Mike Garth um, and Trey Sneed and went towards the bathroom area. Why did you go that way? Um, the shots were coming over my left my left shoulder. Okay, so you were trying to get away from the gunshots. I want to survey and get away from the gunshots. Understood. And where did you go? Um, immediately, I just went to the right. Um, when I fell, BJ picked me up, and he went into the bathroom before me. So that's how he got in there before me. Um, I was actually going to step on the booth, the empty booth, and jump over and try to run out. But something told me, no, don't do that. And they were in the back, and we all went through the swivel door. Um, and this is when I just stopped behind the, the door and looked through the eye of the glass window. Um, and then he tore, he turned the gun towards me and he let off around. Okay. And your honor, I'm going to, I'd like to show five, uh, Mr. Shaw, a copy of what has previously been admitted, a copy of what's previously been admitted as Exhibit 5A. -A. Oh, yeah, that's probably. Sorry. I'm the wrong no, it's the right picture. I just need to show it to over the, on the overhead, so. That was my mistake. Okay. okay. Yes. Now that you've seen that that image, though, what is Exhibit Five A A? Is that is that the area where you were standing behind that door? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm gonna show it to you a little further. What are this image? What is it looking at? What is it showing? Um, the image is showing the doorway to the bathroom area. And who else was behind that door with you? Just in this area or in the bathrooms also? Both. Uh, Mike Garth and Trey Sneed are actually in the hallway with me. Um, Brittany McMurray, uh, Adiba, um, Alex, his girlfriend, Alexis. Alexis, um, at the time, uh, I didn't mean to mispronounce her name. Um, they were in, I think, the closest bathroom to my left at the time. And I think it was um, Amaya Forrest was in the boys' bathroom, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. As, um, as you're hearing gunshots, are you standing or are you on the ground? Uh, I would be... I would be standing like here and I'm looking through the window but um, I'm also listening to the gun and it's not a handgun it's more rapid fires ta -ta -ta -ta. it's how, not pow 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 it's ta -ta 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 -ta. And, and so how, how could you tell that that wasn't a handgun then? Uh, it, was, it was a lot more deafening than what a handgun is and it was a like I said it was more rapid fire than it was finger pull trigger one at a time. So as you were standing behind the door, what were Mike Garth and Trace Need doing? Not sure they were behind me. They were, I'm assuming, taking cover. Did you ever hear any gunshots come through the door into your space? Yes. Describe uh, that. It was more of a whistle. And, um, Come to find out it struck me later um, in my arm. Um, it just was a graze, but um, I didn't know that until I was completely uh, outside. Um, and one of the cops and BJ had brought me up a chair and they were like, are you okay? Look at your arm. I was actually didn't know it at the time. And did the, 
Did you suffer any injuries that, to your arm? Um, I mean, I still have um, a gunshot wound, um, a keloided. Um, I have a scrape on my elbow. I have a scrape on my knee, a couple scratches um, on my face from when we had an altercation and struggle over the gun. Um, nothing cocoa butter couldn't fix. <laughs> Understood. Um, Thank you. What, if anything, did you do? Ooh, I'm sorry. Was there ever a pause in the gunshots? Yes, it was. What, what did you do when you heard the pause? I acted. What do you mean by that? Um, there was a voice that told me to do it, do it now. And I acted upon that voice because um, I didn't see any other way. That's why I didn't go in the bathroom because I told myself that's like shooting, shooting fish in a, in a barrel, literally. Um, so I wanted to stay outside that door, um, try to keep eye on him and just try to find my moment, just try to find my opportunity. Um, and it presented itself. And what did you do when you when you found your moment? Um, I ran through the door as fast as I could. Um, in such a short corridor, um, there's really only two steps that I took behind the door. And I just ran through the door thinking, it's either it's gonna be me or him or it's gonna be, you know, death. We'll see what happens. What did you hit the door with? my left shoulder all my whole body everything that I could to put through the door to put in him did you see Mr. Ranking point the gun down before you rushed the door absolutely and what did you think he was doing reloading put another magazine in once you rushed the door what happened um so I had to I had to think while we were literally fighting. I had to think of what I could do and not get injured at the same time and get away. So giving up my hand was the only thing I could do. You're gonna have to grab the barrel, James. You're gonna have to push it down. That's the conversation you're having with yourself in your mind? Say yes. Yes, sir. Did the two of you have to struggle over the, the weapon? Yes, sir. And, um, go ahead. ahead. Um, so, when I first run through the door, um, knocks him off balance, gets up. Um, I then grab the gun with my right hand, the barrel, and I point the barrel down, because I know if the barrel's pointed down to the ground, it can't hurt me. Um, it can't really hurt anybody if it's pointed down to the ground. Um, and so I take him and I'm kind of choking him with my left hand and I'm pushing him and I'm pushing him out the way and he kind of goes for my left hand and as he goes for my left hand I take my right hand off the, I take I, you still use my right hand I take my left hand off of him and I just pulling up pulling up and pulling up and I finally get the gun and I throw it and I watch the gun look like it in the in the in the in the air for days, and I just watched it glide and glide and glide, and it finally went over the bar. And then I wanted to get to safety, and he was in the way, so I moved him out the way. And and when you say you moved him out of the way, what where did you move him? I moved him out of the way. I moved him out of my way. My way to safety was outside, and he was standing in front of it. So at that point, I didn't care if it was Shaq or anybody. He was in my way. Get out my way. So I pushed him out my way. I manhandled him out my way. I overpowered him out my way. Which, what did he do once he got outside? Um, he then moved. 
um, we made kind of a V shape because he walked on the further side of in between me and BJ's car and he kind of trotted away when I came out I was running um, and I made a right turn and I went around the south end of the building and I made a turn and I slipped and fell that's when I scratched my that's when I scratched my knee um, and I'm still watching him because I thought he was behind me following me but he um, went towards I think it's Pinhook um, he went down Murfreesboro Pike and Pinhook is to the left and I think it's Summit and he just went down Murfreesboro Pike um, so after a little while I made sure he was gone um, I kind of looked, looked he was gone um, jumped in my truck um, on my truck at that time I could have I could have just typed in a pin code and get my truck and I kind of took off and stopped and realized I needed to get BJ um, so I stopped off my door I'm screaming BJ 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 um, he doesn't come but I'm still kind of I don't know where he is um, so I take off and then I say, I need to call 911. Well, my phone's face down on the countertop. And I'm checking, and I don't have anything to call. Um, so I stop an Uber driver, and I stop this girl, and I tell him to call the police. Um, I was in the Easeway slash intersection of uh, Parkersboro Pike and the Waffle House. Um, they stop and call. Um, I turn my truck around and my truck is pointing with the nose towards Waffle House. Um, and then I take it upon myself because I'm, I'm BJ's son's son and daughter. I'm their godfather. So I just have to, I, I got to go find him. Um, Mr. Shaw, I want to I wanna stop you. I want to stop you there. I want to go back to the struggle that you had with the defendant. While you're inside the Waffle House, did you hear him saying anything? Um, he was more so like <laughs> inside the Waffle House? Inside. It might have been some, some curse words he might have let out. 100% um, was focused on getting the gun away from him. And once you got outside the Waffle House, did you hear him say anything to you? Yes. And what did he say? So I, some along the lines of this nigger disarm me. Now, Mr. Shaw, will you you describe for us how you were able to disarm him, uh, Your Honor, with the court's permission, I'd like um, to have Mr. Shaw um, show you then exhibit number 13, where he touched the, where he had to touch the firearm. Right. And if he could be allowed to step down from the. And he, Mr. Shaw will need to put some gloves on before he touches the weapon.
Mr. Shaw, did the barrel burn your hand? Which hand? You were saying you were trying to do anything you could to win to get the gun from him? And about how long did it take you to, to, to win? Um, I'm going to ask them to, I don't want the, the barrel to get pointed at anybody out of concern. Now, Mr. Shaw, have you have you seen any sur surveillance video of the of what occurred inside the Waffle House? Yes, sir. And was that surveillance video a fair and accurate depiction of what occurred? Yes, sir. And, Your Honor, I'd ask to be able to publish what has previously been admitted as Exhibit Three, and this video is contained on the disc. Uh, with the title Video 3. Tend to admit that image at, at eventually, so my apologies, just out of order. Mr. Shaw, whose vehicles are those moving through the parking lot? The white, the white Jeep is Brennan McMurray's, and the um, red F-150 is my truck. Um, the gold, the gold truck. Sure. Oh, uh, the gold truck is Mr. Ryan King's truck. Okay. And so, what are what are the two of you doing now? You and Mr. McMurray. Uh, we're walking, like I said, at that angle to try to um get into the Waffle House. Um, BJ's wearing the white pants, brown shirt. I'm wearing all gray, um, with brown boots. Now, um, can you tell me what it appears BJ's doing right there? Um, to me, it seems like BJ's uh, actually looking towards um, Mr. Ryan King. And what about now? He sees him. Okay. And what, about, what are you doing? Um, right now, I'm not looking at him right now. Did, and... Did you see whether or not you looked at him? Probably right there. Well, it's kind of choppy. But definitely right here. Right here, while I'm looking back. Took that step back. It was just his, you know how you go in somebody's house and the picture is not square? Yes. What that's do you mean by that? That's the kind of energy he was giving me. His energy wasn't, his energy wasn't right. You could just, I could just feel it. It was just, then when we entered, that was the reason I turned around like that. That's when 
PJ said what he said. <clears throat> the individuals who are sitting at this booth back here, who who are they? Can you see? Uh, Mike Garth and Trey Sneed. doing at this moment um i think we're both um kind of texting right now on our phones uh i think we started talking about um a cook washing dishes um as you can see on the on the shelf back there the dishes are quite mm -hmm. high um we're just kind of i think we're just now just looking at the menu Do you remember that moment right there? The first the first shot fired into the building? Yes. Yes. Um, for me, that first moment was to take cover. Who is this individual now walking through the store? Travis Ryan King. Okay. the individual now running out of the restaurant uh travis ryan King. and had you already run out of the restaurant um yes it kind of cuts it off but i was i was kind of tight to the building i'm more so in the grass area okay <clears throat> and who is this right here uh joe perez So that's me coming back in frame. I was trying to make sure he was gone. What are you doing now? Um, this is me calling for BJ. Um, still don't know where, uh, Mr. Ryan King is, uh, but I wanted to get BJ um, or let him know that I was out there because I had, I had seen what was going on. And I'm trying to tell people not to pull in, um, and not not to stop, but um, I'm kind of frantic, kind of in problem solver mode right now. Mr. Shaw, did you ever go back inside the Waffle House that evening? Yes, sir. What did you see when you walked back in? So, I saw everybody that was either shot or passed that night. Um, when I came back down and had my nose facing, had my truck nose facing the Waffle House, I had to see Torrin Sandlin. Um, he was missing part of his dreadlocks because the back of his head was gone. And he was laying in such a way that I knew he wasn't alive. Um, it was not, it, if you went in the Waffle House, it was not a way that you couldn't see Joe Perez. He was just that close to the door. Um, his head was disfigured. He had on white wash jeans. He had on Air Max. He had on Air Max 
Nike's 270s. They had a pink bubble on the back of them. Um, I think he had a gray jacket on and a cap, but the cap was blown off, obviously. His head was disfigured, and his eyes was like a milky gray. Um, and he was in... He was not laying in a way that looked comfortable to lay, other than being dead. Um, neither one of them were making any kind of any kind of movement at all. No chest compressions up and down. No nothing. Um, so I proceeded to walk on the inside, and I said, "BJ, BJ." Um, and a young lady says, this him over here. And I think it might have been Kayla Shaw, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, and I kept saying BJ. And I had to step over Kayla. Um, and I had to step back after I went to the left. I had to come back right because I remember BJ went to the bathroom. So when I go back to the right, I see BJ. I know he's fair skinned it, but BJ was almost as white as his cup up here. Um, Cause he didn't know what happened. And I did know what happened. And I was trying to tell him to come on. And he just told me about his keys. I gotta get my keys. He kept telling me about his keys and I was frustrated because I was telling him like, look, I already fought dude. I already know what's going on. We need to go. Um, and then I can kind of know. I mean, it's it's quiet. It's it's an eerie quiet. It's no screaming. It's dead silence. And I can still see people huddled down. And I'm telling people everybody needs to leave. Um everybody needs to get out because at the time the cook was trying to tell everybody to take cover and I see Sharita and when I see her the first thing that comes to my mind is how can I move her she asked me for help but I'm thinking how can I move her I can't in my mind it's just I can't move her and why, why did you feel like you could not move her? The best example I can give you is her leg looked like a banana peel with no banana in it. It was just hanging there. And I saw it. And I saw the ebony up under the table laying in such a way that, you know, I knew she wasn't alive anymore. And when I seen Sharita, it was just, I, I couldn't help her. Uh, I wanted to, but I her, her I mean, I can see it now. I've, I've been seeing it for thirteen hundred and eighty days. Did you just do that math today? No, I've been keep. I, I kept. I keep it. <laughs> I just been keeping it. Did you see Akila and and uh, Shantia? Shantia also asked for help, and her leg was pretty much the same way and I regrettably had to tell her that I couldn't help her either I tried to get everybody out that was my my goal my mission um Mr. Shah had you do you have any experience in assist uh, I guess Law enforcement, being a paramedic, EMT, anything like that? Military? <laughs> no, sir. Um, so, as you're trying to help people, what, I guess, what do you, what led you to be able to assist people that, that day? I was favored. I was blessed. And and, and Mr. Shaw, you've 
obviously been called a hero by many people. Would you say that you were acting uh, out of out of altruism? Sure. I mean, I don't, you know, in the moment, it's kind of it's real rough to to put a label on it, right? After you seen what I seen and. You had to tell these two ladies, I, I can't help you. But truth and honesty was, I, I really couldn't move you. I would love to help you, but I couldn't help you. Your Honor, the last thing I'd like to do is, is pass up the uh, two images which I've shown to provide a copy to Mr. Sh to defense counsel. These are new, y'all. I just look at them. And, and Mr. Shaw, do you recognize those images? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, they've been pre-marked as A and B. Uh, what, could you tell me, are they, what are they? Um, this first image here is um, me at the hospital. When we went to the hospital, um, we were at the hospital and... Uh, they had wrapped my hands up. I went to uh, Southern Southern Hills. Um, um, they wrapped my hand up and they determined I have second degree burns from grabbing the gun. Um, the mark on my elbow right here is from when I ran around the building and fell. Um, right here is where the the gun, where the bullet grazed my my, I guess you could say elbow area, yeah, forearm right. area. Rather than describing it all, just tell them whether or not you can identify and then let them put it on oh. the screen. So yeah, yeah identify, brother. Thank you, Judge. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that's what you're about right That is, okay. yes. I'd ask that that be made the next exhibit. I have a... So 16 a yes, I'm, I'm going to put it on the computer. Okay. This is 16A um, for the record. And you were just saying, uh, describing the injuries, Mr. Shaw, where, where is the injury to your hand, uh, the burn injury to your hand? Uh, the burn injury to my hand was from um, the web of my thumb, probably up to my index. And then it was on all four of my regular fingers while burned from uh, grabbing the barrel of the gun and wrapping my hands around the barrel okay and what is this injury right here um that's from when i fell um and slid on my elbow when i ran around the side of the waffle house okay and there, is there another injury to your arm in this picture yeah right here is where the bullet grazed me it is kind of off off the off the frame but okay and then i'd like to show 16b And uh, what does this image show? Um, I'm at my church, um, and that's me um, with some galls on my hands. And as you can see here, my fingers got burrs and blood and glass in it. And same thing right here. And my hand was pretty much burnt in this general area. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. And... Thank you for what you did. Good evening, Mr. Shaw. Just a few questions for you. Going back to, uh, we watched the video of it, but going back to the time you engage with Mr. Ryan King and take the gun from him and you throw it over the counter. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I think what you said was that uh, at that point in time, you just wanted to leave and get outside, correct? Mm -hmm. And I think you said something to the effect that you pushed him to the, out of the way or got him out of the way, moved him out of the way. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And when you moved him out of the way, were you still inside the Waffle House 
when what you're saying move him out of the way, were you still inside the Waffle House at that point? No, sir. Okay. So once you got the gun and you you made a motion where you throw the gun over the counter, what is Mr. Ryan King doing at that point? Still trying to fight me. Okay. And you're, but my understanding, though, you're already in the Waffle House next to the tables when this is happening, right? Can we just pull the video back up? I'm just asking you if you remember when you engaged with him with the rifle, were you inside the Waffle House? Yes, we were inside the Waffle House. Okay. Once you obtained the rifle, you got the rifle from him and you threw it over the counter at that point. Is that when you went to leave to exit the Waffle House? Or did you stay in there for a longer period of time? No, I wanted to leave. Okay. And so did you immediately go to leave at that point? I tried, but he was in the way. Okay. And when you say he was in the way, were y'all still inside the Waffle House? Yes. Okay. And at that point in time is when you said you moved him, pushed him, however you want to describe it, but basically you moved him out of the way. Is that right? Yes, sir. And that would have been, if you're trying to exit the Waffle House, that would have been to your right. Well, it's two doors. We were together through the first door, the first breezeway door, and then the second door is when we pushed apart. But we were still in. Okay. Was he already out that first door when you were trying to, to leave? or did? No, he was not out the first door. Were y'all still engaged together? Yes, sir. We were engaged all the way through till we broke through outside pretty much. Okay. And then once you, you broke apart and went outside, and I think you went to the left. Is that correct? Well, I'm staying tight to the building. I'm not in the side. I'm not in the side walk. He, he was in the side walk because his coat came off. He tried to put his coat back on. Okay. But, but what I'm asking you is when you exited the the Waffle House, you went, went out to, to the, the right. What I call the second door. I went to the right. Did you, you? Your vehicle was to the right, and you went to the right, which is exactly where he was, right? Yes, sir. And was were you in front of him? Did you get out before he did, or did he get out before you did? I got out before he did. Okay. And you basically took off running at that point away from the door, correct? Yes, sir. And he was behind you, correct? Yes, sir. All right. And were you turning around and looking at him? Yes, sir. Okay. And I think, and so he, you were in front of him running away and he was behind you. And I think the way that you've previously described it, you said that he was trotting away, I think is the term you used earlier today? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, after that, you went to the Southern Hills Hospital, correct? Yes, sir. And I believe it was a Detective Summerall and a Detective Claire that interviewed you there? I can't remember. 1,380 days ago. Okay. Well, were you interviewed by law enforcement there? Yes, sir. Okay. And you hadn't been drinking that night, so I imagine your mind's pretty clear when you're telling them what happened, right? As clear as can be after seeing what I saw. All right. Was there one or two detectives, if you recall, that interviewed you? Two. Okay. And when they interviewed you, um, you basically, one of the things that you told them was that he was, um, I think the wording was, that he had let that the suspect had left on foot he was not running but just walking at a fast pace and is that what you mean when you're saying trotting. trotting away okay now i'd also think that evening um they basically were asking you what happened and there came a point in time mr shaw didn't it when they asked you did the suspect say anything racial whatsoever you recall mm -hmm. being asked that no sir you don't recall them asking you what that night whether that the suspect had said anything that was racial in nature. No, sir. All right. Do you recall telling them uh, that you never heard anything racial in nature? No, I asked them that, sir. Okay. All right. Would you agree that you did not tell them? You, you gave a statement in this courtroom just not that long ago that was um, racial in nature. You recall it? Yes, sir. Okay. You never told the detectives that when they first met with you, right? Uh, I'm not sure, sir. You're not sure? Not sure, okay. sir. In fact, you've never told law enforcement that, have you? Uh, sure, sir. We, did, we Pardon okay. me? I, I didn't understand you. I said I'm not sure, sir. Okay. I 
one second. Mr. Shaw, um, were you interviewed a few days later after the incident at the police department? Yes, sir. Okay. And was that the same, do you know, recall whether or not those were the same officers that interviewed you at the hospital? I don't know if they were the same officers or not, sir. Okay. Were there two detectives that interviewed you at the police department? Yes, sir. North, Pre North Precinct? I'm not sure which police department. I just know it was at a police department. Oh, well, I, yes, sir. I don't want uh, to. Okay. Okay. And at that time, do you recall them specifically asking you, was there anything racially said by the suspect? I don't know if it was worded as racial. I remember them saying something. Did you hear anything? Okay. And you told them, no, you had not heard anything that was racial in nature. Isn't that correct? I said, they said, did you hear anything? And I said, I'm not sure. But you didn't tell him you heard anything racial, correct? Because I wasn't sure at the time, sir. Mr. Shaw, to be clear, your testimony today is based on your recollection and your recollection al alone. Correct. Okay. No one has told you to add any extra phrases or no, things sir. to your testimony. No, sir. That's it. Did they do a good job last night or did any of you get away? <laughs> Is taking the Fifth Amendment on that one? <laughs> but in any event, if anything should arise that you need anything from, make sure you come, uh, my staff is there to make sure that you're taken care of and to keep everybody away from you. Must remain open-minded. You can't have any discussions when you go back to the hotel tonight, when you're having dinner, whatever the case may be, about this trial or anything related to this trial. I mean, nothing. Can't talk about the way everybody's dressed or whatever the case may be. Zero communications about anything that's transpired in this courtroom. You must keep your thoughts to yourself, remain open minded. Then we'll start back again at 8 30 in the morning or as close there to as possible. All right. Anything else from the state? There you are. Anything from the defense? There you are. All right. Uh, go have a good evening and uh, we'll see you back here in the morning. All right.